Due to the rigidity of academic opinion regarding the history of man, many sites are stubbornly attributed to civilizations that were simply incapable of their construction. Mausoleums, temples, and other structures found all over the world often carved straight out of the bedrock with such artistic vision and accuracy, they rival even the artistic masterpieces created during the Renaissance. Temples such as the Kalesh, among many others found within India alone, that were somehow carved straight out of rock hillsides with stunning precision. Such astonishing feats of ancient stonework that to claim they were created by the currently academically attested cultures, we feel is absurd. Not only are many of these ancient, unexplainable structures built with the utilization of seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks, but they also display masonry techniques and refined stone carving that we believe the only logical explanation for their origins is that of a once highly capable, technologically advanced civilization's workmanship. For example, our recent research surrounding the Basda cave system the confirmed quarry for the nearby ancient ruins of Haran, with a focus on the stone-cutting tool marks found within, and indeed, the easily identifiable shape of the blocks built from this undertaking, we perceive as a possible missing link now connecting a vast number of ancient ruins around the world. Due to it being confirmed as the quarry for Haran, and the unique shape of the stones used in the construction of the site, we have been able to link this signature style of block cutting to many other sites around the globe. With the astonishing ancient rock cut structures found at the site known as Myra, now also identified as one of these sites, predictably claimed as tombs by academia. And although there is no substantiated written reference for Myra existing before it was listed as a member of the Lycian League in 168 BC, the stonework still existing at the site, thanks to ours and New Earth's efforts, could be seen as that of the same as many other ancient sites, also possessing these signature blocks found at Hassan, which we strongly feel, due to a large amount of evidence, as having a pre-Diluvian origin. These identifiable features most notably found within the theater of Myra, and although the flooring has been robbed out, which we presume was once polygonal, just like that of the flooring found still existing at the ancient amphitheater of Delphi. Additionally, the precision with which these pertained tombs were cut into the sheer cliff face is to us clear evidence of a civilization's work, far more capable than that of the academically claimed builders, the Iron Age Lycians or even the Greeks. We suspect like the many other incredibly built ancient sites around the world, this site was merely re-inhabited by later civilizations, utilized and indeed claimed as their work. Not only due to an absence of documentation of their existence prior to this habitation, making academia's claim to their creators an easy assertion to make, but also due to the perceived illusionary capabilities that these monuments would have lent to the Greeks and prior to them, the Lycians' architectural skills. There are two necropolis of these rock-cut temple fronts found at Myra. The first being the river necropolis, and the second being the ocean necropolis. The best-known tomb in the river necropolis is the lion's tomb, also called the painted tomb. This name given to the tomb by traveler Charles Fellows, who in 1840 found the tomb to have still been colorfully painted in red, yellow, and blue. Lycia is known to history since the records of ancient Egypt and the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age. It was populated by speakers of the Luwian language group. Written records began to be inscribed in stone in the Lycian language after Lycia's involuntary incorporation into the Acumenid Empire during the Iron Age, with ancient sources indicating that an even older name for the region was Alope. How can academics continue to claim that such precisely cut stone structures were the work of such primitive cultures? We believe it to be far more logical to presume that these precision-cut structures were already in existence during these eras, 
and probably the reason for the area's initial inhabitation. Who built the ancient rock-cut structures of Myra? Were they, as we postulate, created by the same advanced lost civilization we have linked through the stonework to sites the world over? It is undoubtedly an incredible location, with particular identifiable features, which we find highly compelling. There are countless astonishing ruins upon the islands of Malta, many of which we have covered in the past, some in particular being of such an advanced nature that many a dedicated researcher has come away from said sites with a strong suspicion and awareness of stolen evidence, suggesting to them that whoever built these buildings must have had some form of assistance from someone or something with a far greater intellect than that of ancient or even modern man. One in particular, a structure with such mystifying properties, we have now covered it on two occasions here on our channel. However, upon the lesser-known Maltese island of Gozo stands the oldest yet no less astounding ruin of Malta, known as Gigantia. Thought to mean giant's tower, it is a megalithic temple complex of tremendous antiquity, with many concluding that it far predates even that of the Great Pyramid complex of Giza. A group of Neolithic stones still left in formation, which continue to give modern man a small glimpse into the astonishing past abilities of its builders. Thanks to the moderate, long-lasting temperate climes of the Mediterranean, Gigantia's megaliths still stand, giving us a chance to explore this remarkable site. And what must be considered the most intriguing factor surrounding its construction is the ancient folklore that can still be found swirling within the minds of the local Goatsians. This legend tells of an ancient giant, a female, who long after her supposed demise continued to be worshipped here, with many of the temple's elements now recognized as ceremonial sites, specifically oriented around the rites of female fertility. This folklore has also been intriguingly corroborated by a number of astute, honest researchers who have, over the years, successfully unearthed numerous figurines and statues at sight, specifically associated with this ancient cult. According to local Gozitan folklore, a giantess who ate nothing but bread, beans, and honey once bore a child here, from a man selected from the common people. And with the child hanging from her shoulder, she built these temples to not only use as her abode, but to later be used as her burial location, and thus a place of worship. Yet according to academia, who disregard such legends as having any historical accuracy, still concede that the effort to create such a site was undeniably a remarkable feat, especially when one considers that these monuments were constructed at a time even before the wheel had been introduced and indeed predates the invention of metal tools. However, as they so fervently deny the possibility of past ancient giants, we feel they should consider the most remarkable characteristics of Gigantia being the scale of its still existing yet highly eroded megalithic blocks, with some still in situ, weighing far in excess of 10 tons, somehow transported from a faraway location and placed within the temple walls with such ease and skill that to deny the fact that even if not the work of an ancient giant, but the accomplishments of a past civilization, that they were clearly far greater than those currently claimed within the history books, and to deny such reality to us is a sign of negligence in their responsibility to convey to a learning population the truth of world history. Who built Gigantia? How did they build it, with such enormous stones, and with such an awareness of cardinal orientations? Was it, as the legend states, once built single-handedly by an ancient female giant? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We have in the past covered but a few of the jewels that can be found in the crown of now lost civilizations which once dwelled within India. 
And since this, we have found the possible remnants of a number of different flourishments and additional devolutions within the granite historical record of our planet. Proof which we can now confidently demonstrate via a number of antediluvian sites which clearly display this cyclical behavior. The Ellora Cave system, for example, one of the most well-finished and thus precisely executed, of which Kalish Temple, a site we have previously covered. Yet I digress. There is no possible way to define how long a religion can survive. As such, the fact that at least three different religious influences can be found upon these miraculous, enormous ancient ruins, once hewn directly from the bedrock of Earth, is proof enough of extraordinary antiquity. Along with these three different religious ages, our previous research among Elora's cave have ourselves found separate tool marks we feel logically left by a mere two separate civilizations, one of the famous cup and spoon mark era, claimed across northern Europe as Neolithic, while the other found upon Kalish and many others throughout India, indicative of yet another world-faring, yet far more globally powerful and capable, now lost civilization. According to modern paradigm, quote, the rock-cut activity at Elora Cave, three phases from the 6th century to the 12th century. The earliest caves, 1 through 12, discovered between the 5th and 8th centuries, reflect the Mahayana philosophy of Buddhism then prevalent in this region. The Brahmanical group of caves, 13 through 29, including the renowned Kalish, Cave 16, was excavated between the 7th and 10th centuries. The last phase, caves 30 through 34, reflecting the Jaina philosophy. End quote. However, what we do know for a fact, and quite contradictory to the aforementioned mainstream theory, is that this series of 34 caves were all indeed planned and constructed within the abilities available at the era of each of their constructions. Some indeed more modern and thusly planned and executed to a more primitive ability. But Kalish and many others along the network are and were incredibly, seemingly impossibly well executed, with unbelievable artistic and complex vision, created with technologies to cut rock of unbelievable and now lost and forgotten technologies, and thus abilities. It is popularly accepted belief systems attached to the sites are of a modern age. However, even this cannot be confirmed. Furthermore, we know that to create such a site would, in the modern age, take unimaginable effort and technologies, taking many, many years. Ergo, no matter what the mainstream explanation may be, or indeed the mounting areas of research and the enigmas we continue to stumble upon, adding to our list of areas of interest, all remain a growing and as yet unsolved mystery which we find highly compelling.